This is Willow. And Willow is a very feisty uh, wheat and coated, uh, soft coated wheat and terrier mix. And being a Wheaton, she's a, she is a herding dog. One of her habits is she lunges at joggers. So in this video, I'm going to show you, as a dog fan, I'm going to show you how you can use counter conditioning to help a dog not only not lunge at joggers, but actually see joggers as the indication that I'm about to get a treat. So when you do this, first of all, you want to find a scenario, a place where you're going to be able to find joggers on a regular basis. Now, what we like, don't want to do is we don't want to mix our medicines. So I don't want to have um, the, one of the guardians suggest a place that's close by, but there's also a very busy street. So that can be stressful for a dog. So I'd like you to find a park somewhere that has a path or Runyon or Mandeville or someplace where you'll see a lot of joggers coming around. What we're looking for is a, uh, uh, a corner. Because when she reacts is when a, corner, a jogger comes out of nowhere and that's when she, she's get caught by surprise and she lunges at them. So let's say that um, right here, can you see this in the shot? Let's say that this represents a wall. There's a wall or a shrub or something like that, and it stops right here. So the visual acuity, if I'm looking here, I see a wall from here on. So the jogger, let's say, is gonna be walk, jogging this way, coming around the corner. Willow, I need you over here, sweetheart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get Willow into a position where we're far enough away from this, and we're just doing this for the video so you can see us all in the shot, but you wanna get her as close to this as possible without her reacting when she sees a jogger. My two tests are, can I get the dog to sit while it sees the jogger and take a treat while it sees the jogger? Or whatever the stimulus is, skateboard or whatever. And if she won't sit or won't take the treat, you're too proximate, you're too close, it's too intense. So we keep moving further away. We went as close as we can without her reacting. Willow. So then what I do, let's say that we're at that distance. I put her in a sit. Now she, I think, has some high leg issues, so she prefers to go to it down, that's fine. I take one of these tricky trainer chicken liver treat. It's like a pellet. I smash it. So now it's like flat like a pancake, so I can let her nibble on it in multiple bites. As you can see, I can change where she looks by moving the treat. Now I'm doing it, I'm holding it like, this is where I, how I like to hold it. A lot of people hold like this and then I'm blocking the dog's sight. I, so when I hold it, I like to have three fingers underneath the dog's chin and she's gonna nibble on it here. Now, the first couple of times you do this, get your dog just used to nibbling the treat and try to like have somebody in the room walking around and track and follow that person. So you get used to kind of mirroring and repositioning her head and she's chewing on the treat while this happens. So now when you first do this, we're gonna do this in two different ways. The first way we're gonna do it is we wanna reduce her reaction and, and running at. So we do that by increasing the distance, number one. And then what we do is we're gonna have, uh, since we have two guardians here, one of the guardians is gonna be here, she's gonna be on a leash. And then this is where the joggers are gonna be walking in the walls here. So I'm gonna have the other guardian there. So that guardian can kind of see us and can see the, the joggers coming. Every time a jogger's coming, you wanna come up with a signal, but you wanna change the signal. Because if the dog hears now or ready, then after all, ready means I'm, the jogger's gonna pop out of nowhere. So every once in a while, maybe I tug, tug my ear and that means the jogger's gonna come around in two seconds. Or I scratch my shoulder, or I yawn, or I cough, or you know, put my hands up. Kind of just vary it each time, so she never, not necessarily each time, but each visit. So you might practice this five times in a row, same, do this all five times, next time you might do this. So once we get the signal going, then what I would do is we're sitting here, we're relaxed, and then somebody tugs their, uh, their, uh, their ear, and I know, okay, somebody's going to start chewing, so I go like this, and I have her chewing, and she's looking, and then the jogger comes. As the jogger comes, I have her track. So she's watching as the jogger goes away. She should be able to chew this in about two to four bites. Jogger's gonna move the really fairly quickly. So now because we have enough distance, she isn't perceived to be a threat. Now remember, she's gonna be startled as they come around, so it, you might have to uh, ebb and flow your distance. And what you're gonna do is eventually get to the point where, where she's just watching the joggers, and she's more interested in the treat, she's watching as the jogger runs away. As the jogger, uh, when the treat's about to be gone, she's ready to bark at the person, but now the jogger's moving away. So what she wants to have happen, the person moves away, the treat is gone. When the thing that she doesn't want to have happen, a jogger appears, a treat is being delivered. So this is the counter part of counter conditioning. So after a while, at first she might like nibble and stop or nibble and like look lower her head, but eventually you want to keep on practicing it at this distance until she's just very casual chewing it and no stiffness. Then next, now we can do this next in two different ways we can gradually get her closer and closer to this. So I take, and once we get, we call it five for five. Five times in a row, she takes the tree, looks at the person and is completely chill. Well, then we can take one step closer. And if you take the step closer, she lunges, then back up and practice. Anytime she fails, back up a step. So then we go to 19 feet. 
and practice them at 18 feet, 17. This might not be, this is definitely not something that's not going to do in one sitting. It's going to have to be multiple practices. And I would like you to find different places to do this. Because after a while, I should just generalize. In this corner, I want lunge at joggers, but other corners, I will. So eventually, we want to get to the point where I can pretty much have her like a foot away and joggers come by and she's just watching them as they run by and she's really close and no big deal. Then what I would do is back up to about 15, 20 feet. And then when the dog, jogger comes, now she's, not, she's accustomed to not lunging at them. Now we want to actually create a command word. When the jogger appears, that means I'm going to get a treat. So the first time uh, we do this, now this time maybe they're scratching the shoulder. So scratch the shoulder and I have a treat here and I touch her nose with the treat so I want to make sure she's looking this direction, but don't let her chew it at this point. Jogger appears for one second, then I pop the treat in her mouth and she chew, chew, chews and she's watching them. But by the time she gets done chewing them, the jogger's away. So first it's like a half a second, and then when she stays consistent, she's not reacting. Then we go to one second, then two, then three, then four. Eventually, it gets to the point where we don't not giving the treat until after the jogger has appeared for five or six seconds. Then she gets the treat. Now at this point, the jogger now every time she sees the jogger, jogger after enough practice, jogger means somebody's going to give me a treat. So she'll be out walking with you a month from this, and you're done with this. She sees the jogger. She's like, "What's you going to hook me up or what?" Right now, the jogger is perceived to be a threat. But eventually, the jogger is going to be perceived as associated with a reinforcer or what we call a reward. And so after enough repetition, she will like the presence of joggers if you go at her pace. Now, again, the whole point of this, you have to go slow at her pace. If she reacts at any point, she's not going to listen to anything. You invalidated the work that you did. So move her far enough away where she can settle herself down and bring her back. And if she likes to stay in a lay down position, that's fine. Sitting and laying down puts the dog at a disadvantage. So it's a good indicator the dog feels comfortable with that distance. If you take your time, eventually you get close enough, and then eventually you can back up and do the second stage that I talked about and make it so that every time I see a jogger, it's a good thing. All right, well, this is Willow, and she is sweetie. And this, these are some tips and tricks on how you can use counter conditioning to stop your dog from reacting to something.